Okay, we're going to start from the first line in Ham and Aleph. Just a quick... Okay, we're going to start from the first line in Ham and Aleph. Just a quick recap, because the Gemara is going to be a continuation of yesterday. As we had the statement of Rav on the bottom of Dal and Amad Aleph, Rav said three different halachas. The first was a minchas ha'omer, which is the mincha that is brought, which for us on the, on the second day of Pesach, Tazayin Nisan. So Rav said that as much as the Mishnah said, there's two examples that when you did the Kmitzah, when you took out some of the stuff from the mincha with your hand, the, the Mishnah said there's two examples that if you did it Shalol Shema, you had an improper thought that the whole thing's no good, Rav said there's really a third. So the third Rav said was the minchas ha'omer. When it comes to that carbon you bring on the second day of Pesach, if you do the Kmitzah, when you take it out, you have an improper thought, that's a third example where the entire thing's no good. Therefore, you can't bring, the, you can't bring it on the Mizbeach, you can't burn it up, and you're not allowed to eat the, eat the leftovers. The Rav's second two halachas were that when it comes to the carbon, the Asham, which is one of the carbonos that a Nazir brings, if a Nazir becomes Tamei, he has to bring a series of karbanas to start over. So one of them is an asham. And the second was the asham of a mitzorah. A mitzorah is somebody who had tzara'as, for example, if he spoke Lashon Hara. So that one of the karbanas that he brings, Rav said, both of those, if you shechted it with the wrong intent, they're also no good. So why? Rav explained those two were because that the main purpose of the karban is coming to allow you to do something. Right? Like by the Nazir, it's allowing him to start counting over. By the Mitzvah, it's, it's allowing him to, to come back into the normal place where the, where the Jews would live, the normal Machana. And therefore, if you had an improper thought, the entire carbon is going to be no good. Okay, so the Mesve, we're starting at the top of Hamad Aleph, is going to be a challenge to one of, one of the halachas that Rab mentioned. So Mesve, Asha Mitzvah, if you had a Mitzvah who was bringing a person with Tzara'as, Leprosy, who was bringing this carbon, his asham. So if it was nishchat shelo if you shechted it improperly, so this is the main line we're going to pay attention to, because this is the same thing that Rav said. Rav said if you shecht it improperly, the whole thing's no good. So the Bryce says if you shecht it improperly, o shelonitin midamo agave bahonos, or you didn't put from the blood of the carbon onto the bahonos, bahonos are the, the thumbs of the person, the Brisa says it's totally fine. Right? In the same case, Rav said that if you did it improperly, the whole thing's no good. The Brisa is clear. If you shechted it with an improper thought, you go bring it on the Mizbeach. The carbon is kosher. And with it, you have to bring the Sochim. And you need another Asham brought to, to finish the process for the person himself. So the Gemara says, from here you see tiyuf to the Rav. You see, you see that you see that Rav's incorrect. Lagabi this halacha, because as much as Rav said, if you shechted the asham of the mitzorah, the, the person with tzara'as who brings this carbon asham, if he did it improperly, Rav said it's no good. It's it's explicit in the Brisa that it's olo lagabi mizbeach. You would bring it on the mizbeach. So you see an improper <laughs> thought by that carbon is actually okay. Okay, so now the next part of the Gemara is going back to the first part of Rav. So again, the first part of Rav said that the, by the Minchas HaOmer, the carbon you bring on the second day of Pesach, if you do the Kmitza, if when you, when you take out the stuff with your hand, if you do that within a proper thought, Rav said, it's no good. So Rish Lakish Amar Minchas HaOmer Shekamsa Shlolish Maksheru. Rish Lakish argues, he says, if you do it improperly, it's okay. Vishireha in Nechalim. So, meaning when we had the Mishnah and we said that their Kshayra, it meant two things. Right? A normal Mincha with an improper thought, when we say it's Kasher, it means you can go and bring the Kmitzah, that which you took off, you're going to bring it to the Mizbeach and burn it up. And the leftover, that which you didn't take out, is, going to, is now going to be eaten. So, as long as as much as by this Mincha it's Kasher, in other words, you can go bring it to the Mizbeach, but Shireha in Nechalim. You're not allowed to leave the eat eat the leftovers. Until you bring another carbon, 
another Minchas HaOmer to allow you to eat the leftovers. Because basically what, what the Minchas HaOmer is doing is that the new grain from each year is, is prohibited until this carbon is brought. Right, what we call Yashan or Chadash. Chadash is a, is a reference to the new grain. So what allows a person to eat the new grain is the bringing of this carbon. So Rish Lakish is saying as much as the carbon's okay in the sense that you can go and take the kmitz and put it on the Mizbeach, there's another technical problem, that the leftover grain is still grain from the new year. And just like if somebody would have his box of Cheerios at home, until that carbon's brought properly, he's not allowed to eat those Cheerios. So so to here. In this carbon, as much as it's kosher that you're allowed to put the, that which you took off on the Mizbeach, the leftovers is new grain. It's like the Cheerios of the guy's house. And there was no kosher carbon brought yet. There was no carbon which was, fap, which, which was properly fulfilled. So the Gemara asks, Mikrav Hechi Karva. I don't understand. If you're telling me that this is still new grain which is prohibited, so then how are you allowed to take that, the kmitza, that which you took off, and put it on the Mizbeach? The Pasuk says, Mimashke Yisrael, Minam Mutrli Yisrael. It's clear from this Pasuk, you're only allowed to bring on the Mizbeach something which is allowed for a Jew to eat. And we're holding on this day, this tvua, the grain, the, 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 I'm sorry, the, the, the stuff that you took off is prohibited to eat because we're still holding, by, it still has the status of new grain in the new year. So, Omer of Ada Barava, Kasavarish Lakish, Ein Mechusar Zman Lobobayom. Because on the same day it's going to become mutter to eat, it's going to be, it's going to be permitted to eat. Because basically, once you bring another, the same carbon, right, we're talking in the morning of the 16th of Nisan. So, the, the first person brings in the Minchas Omer, which is going to allow us to eat all the new grain. He makes a mistake. So, Rish Lakish says, Well, the extra stuff you're not allowed to eat until you bring another one. Well, you're going to bring another one in 10 minutes. So we'll bring the other one in 10 minutes. That'll allow me to eat the leftovers of the first grain. So the Gemara asked, but how can you even, that which you took off, how can you put it on the Mizbeach? It's something which right now, at this second, is prohibited for a Jew to eat. Well, his answer is, yeah, but in 10 minutes, it's going to be allowed. Since it's so close, it's not a problem. There's not a, there's not a problem because in a, such a close amount of time, it's going to be something which is allowed to eat. So, Masiv Rav Avda Breder Rav Yitzchak. Yesh ba'ofos shein b'menachas. So, Rav Avda, the son of Rav Yitzchak, asked a question from the Brisa. The Brisa says, Yesh ba'ofos shein b'menachas. The Brisa is saying a list. There's some things which are true by birds, which are not true by a mincha, by a, by a carbon mincha. Yesh b'menachas shein ba'ofos, and the contrast. There's some things which are true by a mincha which are not true if somebody brings birds as a carbon. So now the Bryce explains. Yesh <coughs> ba'ofos, what are the things that are true by birds and not by minchos? Sha'ofos boyin bin adava shnayim, the birds, partners, you can bring it together as a carbon. A mincha, you're not allowed to bring it together, you have to bring it by yourself. Umechusri kapara, and somebody, like a whole list, Rashi says a whole list of a zav and a zava, your letters and mitzorah. And the example, we're not going to get it exactly into all the examples right now, but somebody who needs kapar, who needs atonement, so his carbon is always with birds, or could be with birds, as opposed to with a mincha. That type of person only brings birds, doesn't bring a mincha. The third thing in the list, v'hutra michlal isuron v'kodesh. That when it comes to birds, something which is normally prohibited for any person, is going to be, is allowed in the Beis HaMikdash. So Rashi says, what's that going on? That means Malika. Malika is basically, you would take, I, th I think it's your thumb. You would take your thumb and basically shech the bird with, with your hand. So it's something which we wouldn't be allowed to do here, but in the Beis HaMikdash is allowed. Okay, so those are the three things which are true by birds and not by Menachas. Again, it's that birds you're allowed to bring as partners. Number two is that somebody... Who needs, who needs an atonement, a certain category of people bring birds as their carbon, as opposed to a mincha. And the third is that by birds you have, this is the one the Gemara is going to be pay, paying attention to, by birds you have a case that normally is prohibited, but in the Beis HaMikdash is mutter, is, is allowed. As opposed to a mincha, there's no such thing. 
Basically, if it's allowed, it's allowed everywhere. If it's not allowed, it's not allowed everywhere. Okay, the contrast, mashin ke as opposed to menachas, all those three things are not true. Okay, now the Brisa said the other way too. Yesh be menachas. So what's the list of things that are true by a mincha, which are not true by, by birds? Sha menachas to unas kli. That a mincha needs a kli. You need to, you need to put it into a utensil. The tnufa, tnufa is the waving back and forth. You do that by a mincha, you don't do that by birds. The hagasha, that you actually take it and you touch it to a certain part of the mizbeach, the mincha. You don't do that with birds. The yeshna betzibur kibiyachit. And a mincha is brought in a, in, in, this, in a specific case by the mincha sa'omer. It's brought for all of Klal Yisrael. It's a carbon sibur. It's brought for everybody. When it comes to birds, none of these things are true. It doesn't need to be in a utensil. You don't need to shake it around. You don't need to touch it to the mizbeach. And it's never, birds are never brought as a, as a public offering. Okay. So basically what the Gemara is going to see in here is, is one, one of the six examples. So vi'im isa, the Gemara is challenging. Reish Lakish, if you're right, so again, Reish Lakish said that the minchas ha'omer, this carbon on the 16th of Nisan, that which you take out with an improper thought, you're allowed to go put that on the Mizbeach. The rest you can't eat because it still needs another carbon to allow it because it's new green. So the Gemara says, isa b'menachas nami meshkachas lo dehutra michlal isura b'kodesh. The Brisa was clear that by birds there's a case that for everybody's prohibited and the base of is allowed. By menachos, by mincha, there's no such case. Rish if you're right, I have a case. Because you're telling me the person at home on the morning of the 16th who has his box of Cheerios of Chadash, of the new grain, he's not allowed to eat them. But guess what? In the Beis HaMikdash at that same time of day, on the Mizbeach, you're saying you're allowed to put that kmitza, that which the person took out from new grain, even though that new grain is prohibited for anyone in the world to eat. But you're allowed to put that on the Mizbeach. Because you said, basically, right? That's what, that's what Rish Lakish said before. Because it's, because it's so close, so you're allowed to put it on the Mizbeach. So the Gemara is asking. In the Brisa, it was clear that there's... Only by birds do you have something which is prohibited for me, but mutter, but allowed in the Beis HaMikdash. By Menachas, the Brisa was clear there's no such case. There's no case that I can't do, and in the Beis HaMikdash they could do. Gemara is challenging, according to Reish Lakish, it's not really true. Because according to Reish Lakish, I can't eat my new grain on the morning of the 16th until that carbon is brought. And still on the Mizbeach is going to be brought grain, which is prohibited for any person to eat. So in other words, the Mizbeach, in a sense, is like Hashem eating. Basically, how can I not eat and in the base Hamikdash it's being offered? Umay niu minchas ha'omer. And what would be that example that is allowed only in the base Hamikdash? This carbon, the minchas ha'omer. So the Gemara answers, no, it's not a question. Kevin de ein mechusar zman yom lav isuruhu. Basically, it's based on the same answer we said before. That because in such a close amount of time, it's going to become allowed. So basically, it's not called something which is prohibited for me and allowed for them. Because basically, as much as it's new grain that didn't yet have the carbon brought, it's so close in time that basically it's like it has the status of something allowed. Right? The question was assuming that right now the person wouldn't be allowed to eat the grain. The answer is saying it because it's in 10 minutes, it's going to be allowed. So basically, treat it as if, as if it already happened, and therefore it's not something which is prohibited for me and allowed for hectish. In a sense, we would look at it as it's really allowed for everybody because it's so close. Okay. Okay, Mesa of Rav Sheshis. So Rav Sheshis had a question. Hiktim matan shemen lamatan dam. So we're talking about a mitzvah again. Okay, so let's say a person put on the oil before the blood. <coughs> You're really supposed to put on the blood on the fingers of the Mitzvah first. So if you would put the oil on before the blood, then you malenu shemen, go fill up the, the bucket of oil again. The yaks of yitain shemen acher matan dam. And you'll put on the oil again after you'd put on the dam. Basically, go, you'll go fix the problem. It was a problem, you'll, you'll go fix the problem. 
Okay, what if you put matan behonos le matan sheva? Let's say you put it on his fingers before you, before you sprinkled the blood. I think it means before the Kohen would sprinkle the blood, he put it on his fingers, which is also the wrong order. So yimalenu shemen biyachser v'yitin mi matan behonos achar matan zayin. So basically, same thing, you'll make up the problem. Go fill up the oil again, you did the sprinkles, and then you'll put it on his fingers. So if you did anything in the wrong order, the price is telling you how to fix it. Go fill up the oil again, and you'll do it in the right order. So challenges the Gemara. If you're right, that if something basically is in such a close amount of time, then we don't really care about the order that much. Right? Rish Lakish said, as much as this grain, this second is, is prohibited, because in 10 minutes, when you bring the other carbon, it's going to become allowed. So we don't care if it's, because it's so close, the halacha doesn't mind. So the Gemara is asking, if that's right, on my yach serve yiting, my da avad avad. So so too here, when you made the mistake of you did the oil before the blood, so why is the Bryce trying to figure out how to fix the problem? Why don't you just say there is no problem? You know what? As much as I did it in the wrong order, but it was two seconds later. So if you're telling me that just like the grain, as much as it's prohibited the second, because it's going to be allowed so soon, so the halacha doesn't, doesn't care because it's so close. So so to here. When the Kohen made the mistake of doing the things in the wrong order, it was clear in the bright So He didn't just say there's no problem. He was trying to fix the problem. Saying if you're right that if, if it's so close that there's not a problem, so then why did the Bryce just say don't worry about it? So Omer Papa, shiny hilchas mitzora dechsiva buhu havaya. So Papa answered, you're right that from the Brisa you see that we're trying to fix the problem. That's because it's talking about Mitzora, and in the Parsha, in the Psukim, written by Mitzora, it says, it says a Lushan, it says a word of Havaya. Let's see, the Omer HaKosav Zos Tiye Torahs HaMitzora. This should be the, the laws of the Mitzora. So Tiye Bav Yosetahe, that extra word Tiye, as the mashmos, we, we understand what that means is the In other words, there's a there's a special kpeda, there's a special requirement that the order that the Torah describes needs to be kept. So as much as Rish Lakish is right, that if something is really close in time, it's okay. You see from the Brisa that if you messed up the order, the Brisa is very busy of how to fix the problem. Yeah, that's right. Because because we're talking about Mitzorah, where there's a specific Pasuk. It went out of its way to say that the order which we described is ma'akev, is, is binding. You have to keep it. That's why the Bryce was trying to figure out, figure out how to fix the problem. Okay, Mesiv Rav Papa. So now Rav Papa had a question. Hiktim shamo. If a person brought the chatos before the asham, this is also talking about a mitzvah. So if a person brought a chatos before an asham, so that's the wrong order. You're really supposed to bring the asham first. So let's say he brought the chatas first. Lo acher memaris bedama. Basically, a person shouldn't be stirring the blood to basically let you go do the the, the carbon. You should have done first second. Ela to uber If you did it wrong, if you did the chatas before the asham. So then you messed up, and the chatas needs to be killed. So what, what is the Gemara asking? Simply, it's asking the same type of question. If you're right, that's something which, in, which is so close in time, we don't, we don't mind. So we have another example where a person did the wrong order, but one was very close after the other. So why don't we also say over there, it's not a problem. It's clear by the fact that you have to go kill the one that you did in the wrong order that we care. Okay, the only problem is that just the steps where Rish Lakish said something. Somebody asked a question. Rav Papa answered, pay attention, Rav Papa answered, Mitzorah is different. You can't ask from the, from the parsha of Tzara'as. Okay, now the next line said, Rav Papa basically asked the same question which he just answered. So they asked the Gemara, am I Kamosiv Rav Papa? Why is Rav Papa asking a question? Papa Huda Amar, shiny Hilchas Mitzorah, the Chsiva Buhu Havaya. 
Rav Papa himself is the one that just answered. And when it comes to the parsha of Tzara'as, it has nothing to do with our conversation. Over there, there's a specific Pasuk that said that the order that the Torah describes, you must keep. So how can Rav Papa the next second go and ask a question from the same case he just answered? So Mar says, this is how you have to understand his question. This is really what Rav Papa was asking. Maybe when the Torah describes by Mitzorah that the order you really have to keep, that's by something which is classified as an avoda. Avoda in English means like a work, a service. What it, what it means is something which in the Beis Hamikdash is going to be, fit into that category of avoda. But shechita lav avodahi. But shechita, shechting, is not an avoda. Why not? Because we know that when it comes to shechting, a Kohen doesn't have to do the shechita. A person brings his own carbon to the base of Megiddo, you're allowed to shechita. So the Gemara is saying, from there you see that it doesn't have the halach of an avoda. It's not like all, everything else at the base of Megiddo, or basically a Kohen has to do. Shechita is very unique, that even, the, even any owner could do it. So if Papa was bothered, maybe when the Torah described you have to keep the order, maybe that's by something which is classified as an avoda. But shechita, when it comes to shechting, which is not an avoda, because even every, every owner could do it. So therefore he was bothered. If, if it's true that what you answered, that if something is so close in time, so then if you did the wrong order, so let somebody else be memaris bedama, let him stir the blood, even though you did it in the wrong order, so good, so basically do the one which you should have done first second, and then you'll bring both together. Why are you telling me if I did it in the wrong order, I have to go throw it outside? If, you, if you're telling me if it's so close in time, it's not a problem, so I have another case which is so close in time. And that which I answered, that Mitzvah is different, that's not relevant here, because here we're talking about Shechita, and Shechita is something which anybody in the world could do. So that, that was Rav Papa's question on what we answered in Rish Lakish. Okay, so we're, we're, three, we're three lines from the bottom on, on Hayam and Aleph. So, Ella Amr Rav Papa, high new time with the Reish Lakish. So, because of Rav Papa's question, Rav Papa's saying, I need to say a new explanation of Reish Lakish. Again, Reish Lakish's halacha was on the second day of Pesach, when we're supposed to bring this karba, the Minchasa Omer, if you did the Kmitza, if when you took out some of the stuff with your hand, you had an improper thought, so Reish Lakish said, it's kshayra, it's okay, which means that which you took out, go bring on the Mizbeach. However, the rest you're not allowed to eat. <coughs> so Rav Papa says, I'm going to say a new explanation of why that's true. Omer Rav Papa, high new time with the Reish Lakish, the Kasavar, Reish Lakish holds, Heir Mizrach Matir. That really on the morning of the 16th, all new grain is totally allowed, to, you're allowed to eat all new grain. So that would explain why that which you took off you're allowed to bring on the Mizbeach because really when you wake up the morning of the 16th the guy at home can eat his Cheerios from the new year and this grain in the base I make this is also totally allowed so that's why Rish Lakish is saying that which you took off you're allowed to bring on the Mizbeach and the other half of Rish Lakish which said the, the leftovers you're not allowed to eat so Rashi says that's just it's a mitzvah it's the right thing that you shouldn't eat it until the carbon's brought in other words, it's, it's kosher, it's mutter, you're allowed to eat it, but basically there's a, a lichatchila, preferably you shouldn't, you shouldn't go and eat it until the carbon's brought. So where do we see Reish Lakish holds that? Rabbi Yochan and Reish Lakish, the Amri Tarvayu. Rabbi Yochan and Reish Lakish both said, Afilu bezman shebeis hamikdash kayim, even at a time when the beis hamikdash is around, heyer mizrach matir. When the light of the day comes, the morning of the 16th, it allows all new grain from that year to be eaten. Because the Rav Papa is basically saying, I see that Rish Lakish holds that. Isn't that difficult to understand, though? Because, um, um, please keep your questions for after work. Sorry. Oh, thank you. Okay, so the Gemara says, Vadar Rish Lakish, Lav Itmar, where it says Reish Lakish didn't say it explicitly, but based on something that he said, we understood that's what he meant. 
Because what did he say? The Tanan. Ein mivian mincha menachos ubikurim. Person's not supposed to bring a mincha or bikurim, which is which is new fruits. Uminchas behema kodem laomer. Before that carbon's brought on the 16th of Nisan, you're not supposed to bring these things to the Beis HaMikdash. Bim hevi puzzle. And if you do bring them, it's no good. But kodem l'shtei alechem. The shtei alechem is the carbon we bring in Shavuos, which is, about, is, which is seven weeks later. <coughs> so if you bring these things before that carbon we bring in Shavuos, lo yavi, preferably you shouldn't bring it. Bim hevi kasher. But if you do bring it, it's okay. The Amr of Yitzchak, Amr Reish Lakish, and on that Reish Lakish said, Lo shanu elo ba'ar ba'asar v'chamishasar. When did we say, if you bring things before the minchas ha'omer, before the carbon that's brought on the 16th, it's a problem. That means if you bring it on the 14th or the 15th of Nisan. Avol v'shisha asar mehevi kasher. If you bring it on the 16th, it's okay. So in other words, if... If it wouldn't be okay until you actually bring the carbon on the 16th, so imagine we wake up in the morning of the 16th and we bring the carbon 10 o'clock. So if the new grain would be prohibited until 10 o'clock, so then it's not really correct to say that it's only a problem on the 14th and the 15th. It really is a problem in the morning of the 16th too. So if Rish Lakish expressed it, that it's only a problem on the 14th and the 15th. But once you're by the 16th, it's all good. It's totally fine to bring any carbon you want. So you see from there that really the morning of the 16th, even before you bring the carbon, it's already okay. So that's how Rav Papa knew that that's where Reish Lakish held. So you see Reish Lakish holds that the morning of the 16th, even before you bring the offering, all the new grain is already allowed. Okay. So just to summarize, we're about to have a third opinion. We had Rav on the bottom of, of Dalar and Baraleth, who said that when you take out the Kmitzah from the Minchas HaOmer, from this carbon which is brought on the second day of Pesach, so Rav said the whole thing's no good. Reish Lakish said the carbon's okay, in other words, that which you took out you can bring on the Mizbeach, but the leftovers you shouldn't eat. And our, the whole Gemara we just saw was trying to figure out what exactly is the explanation of Reish Lakish. So now in Hamid Bey's, about 10 lines down, we have the Rava Amr. So this is going to be the third opinion. Rava Amr, Mincha Saomer, Shekamta Shalolishmak Shera. That if you take this carbon and you take out the Kmitza and you do it with an improper thought, the entire thing is kosher. You can go and take it and put it on the Mizbeach. Vishireha Necholin. And even the leftovers you could eat. So, right, Rava is being the most lenient. He's saying, basically, it's, it's 100% fine. And you don't need to bring another carbon to allow that grain to be eaten. Why not? Because if you have an improper thought, that only makes a difference somebody who's basically everything else is okay. He was... He was fit to do avoda. The Gemara is going to explain what that's coming to exclude. lavoda, and something which is fit for avoda. lavoda, and in a place which is fit for avoda. So the Gemara clarifies what the, what it means. lavoda lafuke kohen balmum. If a kohen has a mum, has a certain blemish that makes him improper to do avoda. So Rav is saying if there's already a problem with, let's say, the person who's doing the service, so then if he also has an improper thought, that's not going to make a difference. In other words, the Torah cares more about an improper thought if, until that improper thought, everything else was 100% glak kosher. If there's something that's already flawed in the beginning, then Rav is saying the Torah doesn't care as much about an improper thought. So one example would be like a Kohen who has a blemish. Bedover haroi lavoda. Something which is fit to be brought as a carbon to the exclusion of this carbon, the minchas haomer, because basically it's a it's a it's a tremendous exception to the rule. It's something which is prohibited for every every Jew in the world to eat, and still it's being brought in the mizbeach, something you don't normally find. So since it's such an exception, therefore Rav is suggesting that the improper thought that you had basically doesn't make a difference. 
And the third thing Rava said, that it's only a problem if you're in a if you're in a place that's proper for avoda. To the exclusion of if you had a mis if if the mizbeach somebody somebody took off a, a piece of the mizbeach. Basically, it's not fit for avoda right now. So if somebody would have an improper thought at that time, and then the and then the mizbeach would be fixed later, that improper thought w- wouldn't wouldn't make a difference. Okay, so to summarize, we have three opinions what the halacha is by the Minchas HaOmer. This carbon which you bring on the, on the second day of Pesach, we had Rav who said if you had an improper thought, the entire thing is no good. And it really comes out, meaning in the first Mishnah, which said there's two exceptions, two Minachas within a, which if you have an improper thought, the whole thing is no good. Rav's really saying there's really a third case. Reish Lakish said that really it's okay in the sense that that which you took off you can put in the Mizbeach, but it's not okay because the grain is still not allowed to eat. It's still grain from the new year. Rav is the most lenient. Rav is saying, treat it like you didn't have an improper thought. Because this is such an exception that it's grain nobody could eat, and still it's being brought as a carbon. Therefore, even though you had an improper thought, it's as if you had the proper thoughts. The Torah is, it doesn't care in, in this type of scenario about a about, machshava uh, shalol an improper thought. Okay, so we're by the two dots on Hamid base. We're starting a, a new conversation. Okay, Tana Rabbana. The Bryce says, Keshu Omer Min Habakar Lamata. When it says in the Pasuk Min Habakar, so Lamata just means that it's the second Pasuk, not the first Pasuk in that parsha. She ain't Lomar. The Torah shouldn't have said it. Elulahotia So why did the Torah say that word? To exclude a trefa. A trefa is, an ex- is a behemoth, an animal, which basically has some, something internal that it's going to die in a short amount of time. See, that you're not allowed to bring that as a carbon. So the Brisa asked, why do you need a Pusik? It's I should know it from a Kalvachomer. Something with a blemish, which a person, if he's making a barbecue, you're allowed to shecht it and eat, and eat, that, and eat that animal. But a surah you're not allowed to bring that as a carbon. So you see there's more of a stringency of which animals you can bring as a carbon. So trefa shasur lahedyet. So a trefa, an animal which is, which is going to die very soon, which we already know. If you're making your barbecue, you're not allowed to use that animal. So eno din shasur lagavoa. Is it not logical that if I can't even use it for my barbecue, that I can't bring it as a carbon? I mean, we see from Balmum that even something I could use for my own eating, I can't bring it as a carbon. So there's a stringency of which animals I can bring as a carbon. So something which I, I can't eat myself, for sure I can't bring it as a carbon. So the Bryce is asking, why do, the, why do you need a Pusik to come to say you can't bring this animal, which is a trefa, as a carbon? I should know it even without the Pusik, because it's a Kalvachomer from Balmum. Okay, so basically the next long bit of Gemara is going to be trying to figure out is it a good Kalvachom or it's not a good Kalvachom. So the Gemara says, <laughs> The Brysa really says, but I'll prove you wrong. You're trying to say that something which is prohibited to a person for sure is prohibited the base of I'll prove you wrong. When it comes to Chelev, Chelev is the, the fats within an animal, <coughs> and Dam, the blood of an animal, Yochichu. That'll prove you're, that'll prove you're wrong. Shasurim <laughs> lahedyet. A person at home is not allowed to eat the chaylev, he's not allowed to eat the blood, umutarim lagavoa, but they're brought on the mizbeach. You were trying to say anything which I can't eat at home, for sure I can't bring on the mizbeach. I found the case which I can't eat, and it can be brought on the mizbeach. So Bryce says, no, that's not a good question. When it comes to chaylev and dam, it's not one thing which is prohibited for me and allowed for the mizbeach. It's really in a bigger context. It's being brought from a full animal. So basically, as much as that part is forbidden for me and allowed for the Mizbeach, the Gemara is saying you can't look at it that way. You have to look at it as it's really bon mechlal hetar. The entire animal is really allowed for me. So in other words, as much as you're right the, regarding just the blood, just the, the fats, I can't eat it, the Mizbeach could, it's not a good question because you can't just look at that piece. You have to look at, at, at the broader picture. 
So Tomer betray for Shakula Asuru. So is that a is that gonna be a proof for a trefa, an animal, which the entire thing would be prohibited? Maybe anything which is fully prohibited for me, I should know from a, from a kalvachomer that it's fully prohibited to bring as a carbon. Velotein with Harris Legavoa. Okay, so some people, the sheet on the side of the Gemara take, takes out that line. So the Gemara says, Malika Tochiach. So I'll prove you wrong from Malika. So again, Malika is shechting of the bird basically with, with, with your finger. So what's the halacha by Malika? Shakula Isser. The entire bird is prohibited. For Usr Lehedyet, Umuteris Legavoa. A person is not allowed to do it, he's not allowed to do Malika to any of the bird. And it's entirely allowed in the Beis HaMikdash. So you were trying to say you never find something which is prohibited for me at home, which is allowed in the Beis HaMikdash. I found you a case. I'm not allowed to do Malika at all. And in the Beis HaMikdash, they do Malika. Where I says, no, that, that's also not a good proof. Malu Malika shikain kedushasa osurasa. In other words, the reason why, I, why Malika is allowed is connected to the fact that it's hektish, that it's kodesh. The fact, one more line, ma'sha'en came betray for ha'sha'en kedusha sa'osrasa. The fact that I can't, that a person can't, can't bring a carbon as a trefa, it's a trefa whether or not it's hektish. In other words, it doesn't become, an animal doesn't become uh, uh, deadly ill because it became hektish. Right? It's just, it, it's going to die or it's not going to die. But because I'm Makdash, because I make it belong to the base I make, this doesn't affect its physical being. When it comes to the halach of Malika, the reason why the Torah allows Malika is connected to the fact that it's Hektish. So in other words, you need to prove, you can only prove to me something which, basically, the, the, the Siba, the, the reason why the halach is true, is not because it's Hektish. Right? Like if I would say, I'm not allowed to get benefit from something which belongs to the Beis HaMikdash, but the Beis, HaMikdash, but the Beis HaMikdash could. So I'll prove from there something I can't do, the Beis HaMikdash could do. So you say, that's a mistake. The reason they could get benefit is because they own it. The reason I can't get benefit is because I don't own it. That doesn't prove that something which is prohibited for me is mutter for them. You need something which is basically parv. Something which the reason why it's true is not because it belongs to Hektish. Okay, so basically, to sum up where we're holding, is the Brisa has not provided a proper pircha, a proper question on our Kalvachomer. So we should really be able to learn if by a balmum, something which a, with a blemish I can eat, and still I can't bring it as a carbon. So something which is a trefa, which I can't eat, so for sure I shouldn't bring it as a carbon. I shouldn't need a pasik to tell me that. The Brisa finishes off, beim hashavasa, and if you'll have a good question, so the Kishu Omer min habak or lemata, when the Torah came and said that extra word she ain't talmalomar, that's lahotias atrefa. The Torah which said the extra word that's coming to exclude a trefa. So the question is, we never provided a, a we never provided a question in our kalvachomer. The Bryce is just ending off, and if you come up with a good question, so the Torah anyway wrote an, an extra pasuk that says, this animal, which is a trefer, you're not allowed to bring. So the obvious question is, meaning we, we didn't really answer the question. Is you only need the pasuk if you don't have a kalvachomer. The Brisa attempted at providing us a question on the kalvachomer, but it didn't come up with anything. So why is the N ending off? And if you come up with a good question, so the, the, then, then the pasuk is coming to say it's still true. So the Gemara is bothered. Ma im hashvasa. So what is the question on that Kalvachomer that you need the Pasuk to come and say that a trefa you can't bring as a carbon? So we're going to have a whole series of, of suggestions. You could say that the Mincha of the Omer, that carbon you bring on the second day of Pesach, that'll prove you wrong. It's something which is prohibited. I'm not allowed to eat that grain. And still it's being brought in the Beis HaMikdash. So you see, a, you see it's not true that something I can't eat, for sure the Beis HaMikdash can't eat. Because you have something I can't eat, this grain, and still it's being brought as a carbon. So maybe that's the question that the Brisa was suggesting. So we say, no, Ma'la Mincha Sa'omer Shekein Materas Chodosh. That maybe there's a leniency by that carbon, 
because as a result of bringing that carbon, it's allowing all the new grain. In other words, maybe the Torah specifically made a leniency here because there's a purpose, there's, a, there's an extra purpose to the leniency because it's coming to allow all the grain all over the world. That doesn't prove by something which, like a trefa, which is just being brought for itself. There's no, so to speak, bigger, bigger purpose to it. Whereas there's no bishvias or in shvita where it's not being, it's not being matter, it's not allowing any of the grain. So the Mars is Shvias Nami, she came at Terra Svichin, Bishvias. Even on Shmita, it is allowing something. So maybe it's different because it's allowing Svichim. Svichim is basically like stuff that just grew without without planning. Like a person dropped a couple seeds here and there and it and it grew up by itself. So it is true that it's not allowing everything, but it's still allowing something. So maybe the Torah gave the leniency specifically because it's coming to allow certain grain. Mary says, no, Rabbi Akiva, Damar Svich and Asurim Bishvias. I'll tell you, we're going like the opinion of Rabbi Akiva that says that Svichin are prohibited on Shemitah. So basically, maybe I'll, I'll prove you wrong. You're trying to say, if I can't eat it, for sure the Beis HaMikdash can't eat it. So I'll, I'll prove you wrong. When it comes to the Minchas HaOmer, I can't eat my new grain at home. Still, the new grain is being brought to the Beis HaMikdash. You'll ask, Maybe that's different because it's coming to allow things to be eaten. Well, what are you going to say in Shemitah, according to Rabbi Akiva? It's not allowing anything to be eaten. So maybe that's the good question in our Kalvachomer, which would be why I need the Pasuk to say that you can't bring a treif as a carbon. Mar says, that's not a good question. Omer le Rav Acha bar Abba le Rav Ashi. Rav Acha son of Abba said to Rav Ashi, the Rabbi Akiva nami nifrach. Even in Rabbi Akiva, you can ask a question. As much as in Shemitah, it's not allowing anything in Eretz Yisrael, but there's Jews all over the world. So it's still allowing Jews in Chutz Laaretz to eat their new grain. Basically, there still is something different about that carbon. It still is allowing, allowing something extra. And even according to the opinion that says, Outside of Eretz Yisrael, it's not the Raisa. It's not from the Torah that you can't eat the new grain from the year. Well, there still is a leniency, the Gemara is saying that in that carbon which was brought, that Menchas HaOmer, it's at least going to allow in the, again, we have, we have this whole pot, you take out some. So it's at least allowing in the leftovers that that which you eat is now not going to have the Isser Chodosh. It's not going to have the, the prohibition. So in other words, in other words, we're, we're in Eretz Yisrael. We're on, this, we're on the 16th of Nisan. You have this whole pot. You take out the Kmitza. So as much as it's not allowing anything outside the world, but this grain right here, it's taking away the prohibition of Chodosh from, from that grain itself. So therefore, there is still an extra leniency that it's coming to allow something extra. Okay, so to summarize, again, what we're holding right now is that the Bryce has said, it's clear from the Torah, really, that you need a Pusik to say you can't bring a treif as a carbon. The question we're dealing with is, why do I need a Pusik? I can learn it from Balmum. If a Balmum, something with a blemish, I can't, I'm sorry, which I could eat, I can't bring it as a carbon. So something like a treif, which I already know, I can't eat, for sure I can't bring it as a carbon. So the goal is, let's try to prove that wrong, which will answer why the Torah wrote a Pasuk to come to say you can't bring it as a treif. So our first suggestion was for Minchas HaOmer. The Gemara is coming out. That itself is not a good question. Okay, let's see a little more. Omer le'ravacha me'difti le'ravina. I'hachi treifa nami takri v'tatir l'avsha v'socha. So if you're right that that's a good question, that by the Minchas HaOmer it's at least allowing the grain that's right here to not have the prohibition of Chadosh. So you could say the same thing by Trefa. Maybe you need a Pasuk because when you bring the Trefa, I would have thought just bringing the Trefa as a carbon would take away the prohibition of Trefa. And if somebody would eat that, he didn't transgress. He didn't transgress the prohibition of Trefa. Basically, if, if what you're asking is a good question by Chadosh, I could say the same thing by Trefa. And it would actually answer the question. Maybe the Torah specifically said a Pasuk because 
I would have thought if you bring the trefa as a carbon, now it takes away the prohibition of trefa. So the Torah specifically came to say, don't say that. So Ela Parachachi, if you want to get rid of the question from the Minchas HaOmer, you'll ask like this, Malu Minchas HaOmer, Shekein Mitzvasa Bekach. You say, by Minchas HaOmer, that's what the Torah said you have to do. In other words, if the Torah would say, you have to bring a, uh, you have to, if the Torah described here, this is what you have to do, so then, so then that's what you have to do. As opposed to by a trefa, I don't need to bring a trefa as a carbon. If the Torah would say, go bring a trefa as a carbon, so for sure I could. We're describing once the Torah allowed me to bring a non trefa a go- totally good animal as a carbon, can I volunteer to go bring this, this uh, sickly animal? That's not, you can't bring a proof from something which the Torah required you to do something like that. Okay, so maybe we'll stop over here and we will pick up tomorrow. Yeah. Uh-huh.